it's been a time for reflection for for the city. Uh, I think all of us have been amazed at the uh, at the outpouring, really, and and uh, everybody has gotten a different sort of, I think, new and and uh, enhanced sort of uh, feeling about the man. So, um, Rick, you want to start and tell us what your thoughts are? Well, first, I thought all those folks said so many things that were true. It's amazing how many of the same themes came through. But there's one characteristic about William Donald Schaefer that I think Mikulski hit on. He was absolutely relentless in everything he did. Once he decided to do something, he didn't ever take his eye off that goal. And as soon as he got there and achieved it, he was the one to another one over and over. I, I sat a few months ago, less than a year ago, at, at the Center Club with uh, Lane Lebo Sachs and the governor, and this big panoramic view of, of the harbor. And I said, to Governor, do, do you, are you capable of looking across this landscape and appreciating what your contribution has been? It just, it, it wasn't even penetrated. I mean, he, he, just, he never, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost regrettable that he never took the time, savor is exactly the word, to really come to terms with all that he had contributed. It's, that's interesting, because I asked him exactly the same question in a car when we were driving by some of the things uh, for which he was responsible. But, you know, I do think, actually, he took a joy in it. But I think one of the uh, important things that we all need to look at is not what he did, but why he did it. And it's wonderful that there are all these tangible uh, things that we can point to that reflect uh, the incredible genius of Don Schaefer. But I think the why is so important, and you captured some of that, I think, in this piece. He was a public servant, above all things, rather than a politician. That makes what you do and the way you do things very different. And I think someone in the piece mentioned about the psyche of the city, and I think the most important thing that Don Schaefer did for Baltimore was to really make us have faith in ourselves, to, uh, with his relentless enthusiasm and passion, uh, make us all realize that Baltimore could be everything and more than we thought it could be. And he changed this city by turning around the psyche of the city. Could you all talk a little bit about what attracted you first to him? You, you all served him in one way or another. What, what, what brought you to, to his side? In 1968, I worked in the city solicitor's office for a very short time. And uh, he was president of the city council. He put in a bill, a stop and frisk bill, that would have allowed police to stop young men on Howard Street. Uh, we had George Russell, a very attractive, very articulate, very smart city solicitor. I wrote an opinion, and long Judge Russell signed it, that said the bill was unconstitutional. And that started a bit of a flap in the paper. <laughs> Mayor D'Alessandro didn't mind much because it looked like we were protecting the citizenry from uh, uncalled for police activity. One night I was in my office at 8.30, about two or three nights later, I got a call from Joan Baresca. She said, the council president's over here now. Can you come over? I thought, well, this is not a good idea. <laughs> There's no one around. <laughs> so I went over and the, she put me in his office and he closed the door and he gave me his side. First he told me that young liberals who knew nothing about how city work and were so focused on the constitutional rights of criminals should start thinking about the victims of crime. Then he told me about all the store owners on Howard Street that were talking to him about moving to the suburbs to shopping centers. And then he said that keeping this city together is one of the hardest things you can imagine, young man. Go back to your office and try to do something helpful. <laughs> I went out of there. I didn't know Don Schaefer. Before that, I thought he was a little bit quirky. So you don't get the same sense of a city council president as you get as a mayor. But I went out of there thinking, hey, this guy is really glued to his job. That was all sincere and down to it. And even though I disagreed on the constitutional part, I, I understood immediately, this is a real leader. There's a young state senator here in Baltimore named Bill Ferguson. I have sweaters older than he is. Mm -hmm. um, Bill Ferguson is a Schaefer scholar. So the, the, and, and the Schaefer scholarships are designed to attract smart young people into public service. Like College Park? 
uh, all over the state. Yeah, but I mean, the state. Well, F Ferguson went to law school uh, with that scholarship, I yeah, believe. Yes, I think that's correct. I mean, we're talking about legacy here, I think. Exactly. So that, that's where I'm going, and I and I and so so for me, and I, I think I mirror a, a, a lot of people's who, who, people whose lives were touched. I mean, I was completely young, completely unmolded, and just you know learned it all this one particularly unique way to do things. And it affects everything I do and how I go about, you know, my, the, the work side, and maybe some of my personal side to this moment. Well, I think that's true of all of us who work for him. I mean, the, the legacy for us on a very personal level is indelible and so much a part of our DNA. But uh, when you're talking about the, when did you first meet up with Don Schaefer? Actually, the first time I saw him, I was living in Washington and Bob Embry was a friend of ours and Bob was campaigning for the city council, and I, I saw this guy, who ended up being Don Schaefer, speaking before Bob. He was not particularly eloquent. Bob was, of course, enormously eloquent. And I thought, hmm, that guy's running for city council president. Subsequently, we moved to Baltimore, and I'm working for Embry at HCD, and in 1969, there is a ruling about when the heat is turned on in public housing. There's a, a specific date. And uh, Embry was very concerned because it got cold very early that fall. And I was sent to the city council president to talk to him about getting the heat turned on. And he looked at me and he said, nobody's going cold in my city. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I love this man. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of my enormous attachment and, and love for Don Schaefer. He attracted all of you. You, you were you were young strivers. You wanted to do good things, but it was beyond that, wasn't it? I mean, it, it as Barbara Mikulski said, it got into the culture. Yeah, I think he had just this incredible need to change our society and our city. It was about making Baltimore a much better place, and he was brilliant about it. He had a very large view. And then he had this relentless pursuit of goals that came out of that large view. And then he was right down on the, on the level that Sandy just talked about. No one's going to go cold in my city. He would, make, uh, he would make alliances with the most powerful people in the city, but he would find those people in neighborhoods who fixed their screen door and cut their lawn. And damn if he wouldn't find out their names, and they would know his. And so he created a communion of people that went, you know, from people like Mark and Sandy who worked with him every day for a long time intensely to people who saw him three times a year but there was a connection that was very strong and it all was centered on making a better world but that's was, where you met him because he was authentic he was authentic, so yeah. every day that you worked for him you felt like you were doing something almost larger than life sure. and it was not about him personally so looking at him don Schaefer, the public servant versus the politician is a very important uh, nuance, I think, as, as you think about what this man did. And so when you ask, you know, is it repeatable? Uh, absolutely. But I think you have to have a passion and uh, a belief that you can do anything. And I think that's why we loved working for him. Man, there was nothing we couldn't do. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do, Baltimore couldn't do. It was so exciting. There, there was a mix of traits that just made it almost, for me, magical. But I would say <clears throat> at the heart of it is integrity. I mean, you never had to think right. twice about what, what you were doing and why you were doing it. Um, this, this insatiable uh, desire to attract talent, he, lo he wasn't insecure in that way. Lots of really interesting people around him. I've been looking for a way to sort of express this, but he loved sort of building a sense of team and community community and it could be the, the the people around him it could be a neighborhood it could be the city but he loved being part of a community it would almost su substituted for family and you know he was a brilliant manager which is not a word that people generally use in talking about Don Schaefer but he was a genius at managing all of us we couldn't do enough we couldn't work enough hours we couldn't come up with enough good ideas we were so caught up in this whole culture of achieve for Baltimore I, I think one of the other things that he did was in public. I mean, please respond to this a little bit. You were talking about the difference between the outer perception of his sometimes pretty rough treatment of people, like reporters, but, and others. But but within your group, it was a, it, there was a softness there, 
and but one of the things that that always occurs to me is that he never backed down. And if you were working for him and you saw that, you thought this is a I'm I'm with this guy because he is going to push our program. He's he is not going to be intimidated at all. Others might be by him, but he was never going to be. I mean, I think that really matters in a leadership formula. I. I worked for Schaefer from 71 to 84. I still feel totally connected to him. I love him. And I think virtually everyone who worked for him feels that way. That kind of sustainable admiration and deep feeling is a very unusual thing in life in general, but particularly in politics. I wish I could show you all the emails I I've received in the last few days. It's astounding. People from everywhere in the United States, friends, people who once worked with him, they all connect. He, uh, you don't think he was really very political, Rick? You know, um, I, I, I was going to say earlier that, that one of the ways uh, he manifested what the integrity that Mark and Sandy have been talking about is that except for the times he was in the middle of an election, he really was apolitical. If you went to him about a public policy problem or an idea, he never started with what's the political downside or where are right. the votes or who's going to be for it or against it. He made you go through the substance of the issue, element by element. And then he made his mind up about whether he wanted to do it. Politics were just how he got things done. That made all of us feel very good about ourselves. We didn't feel like we were in a small political world. We felt we were in the world of governance. I think that Donald Schaefer had a particular set of characteristics, including brilliance, which is not necessarily easy to come by. Your parents give you that. You don't develop it in school. And he just stayed with things in such an intense and relentless way. It's a hard, it's a hard bar to cross. Now, could Stephanie Rawlings be William Donald Shaver? In another form, yeah, she's sure. got the talent. She could do it. The governor, the governor was, was a student of city government. I mean, he had a lot of background before he became mayor. So he couldn't be snowed. He knew what he wanted to do. Uh, and he, to me, he was the natural. He was the natural administrator, uh, the politician I'm not so sure about. Um, but the combination of, of readiness and, and instincts and this passion for the community, I think, are what, what made it happen. Andy? Well, um, I do think it's transferable. I think there are other Don Schaefer's can come along. God knows he was special. Uh, but I think what really distinguished him was that he was never really running for another office. The fact that he went from mayor to governor is a whole other conversation. But when he was mayor, he was not aspiring to be governor. He was aspiring to be the best mayor in America. And as far as I'm concerned, he was. I think there's a lot of agreement with that thought. And um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll discuss more of it with uh, some of the people that looked at him from the outside. And I'm talking about people like me uh, in the media. And, and that'll be part of our next segment. Thank you all so much for coming.